To get started, it's important to learn how to explore the Houdini workspace with a focus on the panes you will use on a regular basis. The Scene View panel lets you create objects interactively, while the Parameter pane lets you edit node properties, and the Network Editor lets you work directly with the nodes. Learning how to work back and forth between these interface elements will be an important skill moving forward. So to start, let's go uh, File, New Project, and this will uh, allow us to create a directory structure that house all the parts of our project. We're going to change the name of this to Overview Lesson. Enter. We're going to press Accept. And once we have that, we're going to go File, Save As. And this is where we're looking into that directory. And we can go into here and go Gumballs01. Now, currently this workspace has a dark gray look. If we press D, you go to background, that's because we set this to dark gray. I think it's light by default. Uh, we just, I personally like dark gray, so I've made the switch there. Now in the scene view, let's press C. We get a radial menu and we can go create, geometry, and let's pick tube. Now it's going to start building it, but we don't want to do anything yet. We want to press the enter key to put it at the origin. Now up here we have something called the operation controls. And up here we can change some of the parameters on this. So we can go 0 0.7, 0 0.5 for the radius. We can do a height of 1.5. And we can go rows 6, columns 14. And there we go. We have our first shape that we built in Houdini. Now to take a look at it, we're going to want to use the view tools. Now the way the view tools work is there's a couple different options. One is we can click on this tool here or press the escape key to go there. So once we have this, we can left click to tumble, track with the middle and dolly in and out with the right. Now if we're in another tool, like for instance, the select tool, the way it works then is we need to use a hotkey. So we press the space bar, temporarily turns on the view camera tool, and then we can left, middle, and track. And we can also use the alt key for that. So again, the alt key does all of those three things, and that is an acceptable hotkey as well. Now once we have this, if we want to go back to a home view, we can press space bar H, we'll go back to a home view. If we have this uh, construction grid active, which is bigger there, Spacebar H will actually go out to the construction grid um, if we want to do that. But if we, and then the selected object would be Spacebar G. Uh, but we can turn that grid off and we'll be able to work from there. Okay, so now we're at the, what's called the object level. So we have our first object, this tube object. And what we want to do is look at it in four views. We're going to go Spacebar B, and here we see four views. So we can use our view tools in the different view, views here. And if we want to, we can go into here and press V, Shading, Smooth Wire Shaded. Currently that only does the one view there. If we click up here and go Smooth Wired Shaded, uh, we'll get all four. And that just allows us to see the topology in case we want to uh, work with it as we're making decisions. Now an op another option here is to go in and link the ortho view. Now we make view changes in one of these the other orthographic views all follow suit, so that keeps a relationship between those three. So let's press S to get the select tool, although I think we were already there. We're going to select this object, and we're going to press 4. 4 goes to a select mode here of uh, primitive selection, and you'll notice we dive down to the geometry level. So there's a node here where, which was used to create the tube, and here are all the parameters. Some of those parameters are the ones that we played with in the operation controls up there. Now the nodes in this context are known as uh, surface operators or SOPs and they let you manipulate geometry. We're going to go into this view and we're going to go tab and we're going to type match and we're going to select match size. So the tab view is that we use the radial menu to get uh, a tool before. Another way to do it is through the tab menu. So it, once you know the name of tools, you can just use this and type out the name, match size. Now it needs geometry, so we're going to double click on here and press enter. And this puts this little widget on it. And we're going to justify Y to min. So the minimum of the geometry will be lined up with that. And we're going to do none for the other two. 
um, just because they don't need to be aligned uh, at the moment. Now we're going to press um, the S key again and this time what we're going to do is we're going to press 3 to change this to edge selection. We're going to double click there and that will select the ring at the bottom of the cup. And we're going to look another way to get access to tools. We're going to polygon shelf tool up here. We're going to go to go across here and polyfill. There we go. Now the polyfill it adds another. Notice how everything we've done so far has a node, the tube, the match size, and the polyfill. Um, and in this one here we're going to change this to quadrilateral grid which creates a cleaner look there. Uh, corner offset we're going to knock over two. That lines that grid with the, with the axes better. And we're going to set the tangent strength you notice a little bit of a bulge coming out the bottom there, so we're going to set that to zero, and that will flatten that bottom. So that's good there. Now, let's uh, zoom out a little bit here. Let's look at this here. Now, one of the things uh, with the proceduralism of here is because of the match size, the way that it works, if we go to this tube, and let's say we change that to three, notice how, okay, what happens is the match size now puts it above the ground, and then the polyfill still works the way that it does. So you have the ability to, to make changes anywhere in this stream and have it flow down. So if we go back to there and we say, um, now let's change that back to 1.5. Again, that flows. And you notice when we select this tube here, we're seeing the tube in its original position um, with this wireframe uh, instead of in the final look. And there's, and we could, if we want to, just go completely back to there and make changes and then go back to here as well. And those are some of the things about working with networks that you will you will learn. So let's go to uh, point selection. We're going to press 2 to get point selection. We're going to select these guys here in the middle and that will select all the way through. We're going to go tab, soft, transform, and if we go E to get scaling, we can begin to scale that out. And then we can take the radius of that and just push that out. And that gives us a nice sort of curved look for our cup. And there we go. And there's a soft transform there. So now we're going to go uh, back to the select tool. And we're going to go four to get primitives. And we're going to select all of these, and we're going to go, you know what, let's go back spacebar B to the big view here. We're going to go C, model, polygons, poly extrude. And we're going to push that in a little bit. And let's just, we can put that exactly point 0.1. And then we're going to output the back. Now you'll notice that my surface, instead of being light gray, is now a darker gray here. A bit of a bluish gray. So the reason for that is that our, our normals are going the wrong way. So we can fix that. We can press N to select all of, all of that, or we can double click on there to get all of that. We're going to go Tab Reverse. And that will flip the normals, and so now we can see them properly here. So sometimes, depending on how you draw things or what direction you extrude, you might get yourself in a situation where your normals are not pointing the right way. So you can reverse those easily. So let's get the select tool and make sure nothing is selected. Now we want to go around and look at the negative Z direction. So that's coming out here. You can sort of see it with the widget down here. But it, it comes you've got a nice set of faces right against there. So we're going to take advantage of those. Now we're going to go C, Model, Polygons, Poly Bridge. It asks for a source, so we press Enter, and a destination. We're going to select that and press Enter. Now at first, we're not seeing very much here. We need to change some things. The segments we're going to press to 10, send to 10. We're going to make sure this is curved. And you can sort of see that in there, but it's not still not doing what we want. And we're going to do a pairing shift. I think one should do the trick. And there we go. So it's, at least it's going in the right direction, uh, but it's not exactly where we want it. 
So we're going to go down to the footing section. So this is these two things are called the footings. And we're going to go to the destination one. And then we're going to go al along to push that out. And because we push that out with along, you'll see we're starting to get on the right side. So that's looking better. Now, if we want to, we can set the magnitude of this to 3. Oh, uh, let's see. This one to 2. Now, we need to just click, click. Okay, there's the handles. These handles actually allow us to pull out and sort of get what we want there. So if we want to put three in there, and then we can play with this one as well. So you've got interactive ways of working with this. And sometimes what happened there was you've got to be on the handle tool right here, and you just got to make, sometimes you have to jig it. So just clicking this node and clicking this node sort of got that back. We're going to set this auto using uh, explicit direction, gives us a bit of a handle. And we're going to do the same thing here along explicit direction. And because of that, we now have a handle here to even re refine this further, to sort of get the look that we want. So we've got lots of control there on that bridge. So if we go to the bridge uh, tab here and scroll down to thickness, uh, we can change the thickness of the bridge to 0.66. So it's sort of it's one per, it's full size at the at the connection points, and then it goes down to 66. And then this thickness ramp actually allows us to go in and reduce that even further in the middle. So you've got this nice um, fading off of the shape as it goes down there. So that, that works quite nicely. So let's press S to go back to the Select tool. Double click this. And we're going to go Tab Subdivide. We're going to subdivide that geometry. Now in this case here, we have not, this is a, subdivision where we actually have added geometry to it uh, so there's now more geometry than there was before and that's that's the way that that works and we're going to double click on oh sorry press select again double click on this we're going to tab color and we're going to change that to an orange color and just to help us keep organized we're going to take that little knob there at the end, we're going to right click on there, and we're going to type Null. And we're going to place that down, and then we're going to set the display flag. So you've got all these, when you get to a node, you've got different flags. So you can click directly there, or you can click out here, and that sets the display flag on there. Um, in later lessons, you'll start using some of these other ones, but for now, uh, the display one is one you're going to use a lot. And we're going to change this to say cup out. Now, in terms of the shading on here, we can go V shading, smooth shading, or as we learned before, we can do it in here by picking there. And what we want to do is we want to go up to the object level and we're going to change this name of this to cup. Okay. Now, if we want to, 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 to subdivide this from a, like, just to see, we can press Shift plus, and you see how everything's much smoother now. So what's happened here is we've applied a subdivision for, for display. And so, sorry, if you click on here and go to render, you'll see we're displaying as subdivision. That was full geometry. This is subdivision. Uh, this doesn't help with rendering. You have to actually have to check this if you want to render subdivision, uh, but it helps you just look at things. And you can go Shift minus. If this is selected, you can go Shift minus to turn it off and Shift plus to turn it on. So let's go Shift minus, turn that off, and let's go back to uh, smooth wired shaded, and we'll use that in our next step. Anyway. There you go. You've got your first uh, procedural model built up here using Houdini. Uh, and now let's see how to work with the nodes.